अभी अभी उड़ती खबर आई है कि तुझे सैलरी हाइक मिला है तो वो पार्टी कब मिलेगी अरे पार्टी के लिए पैसा बचेगा ही नहीं क्यों आई एम गोइंग शॉपिंग रियली क्या आई एम बाइंग न्यू आई फोन फोर्टीन ओके मे बी समुची बैग एंड बस 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 कितना खर्चा करेगी सो वॉर एवर वॉट आर योर प्लान वैसे मैं भी शॉपिंग जाने वाली हूँ क्या शॉपिंग मैंने कुछ अच्छे स्टॉक्स चूज किए कुछ अच्छे म्यूचुअल फंड चूज किए एंड कुछ अच्छे कॉर्पोरेट फंड Hey folks, see you Rachna Ranade here and I welcome you all to a very important video which is about investing versus loan repayment. Many of us come across loans at some point of time in our lives, be it something like a home loan or it could be a car loan, it could be an education loan. At the moment we take any loan, EMI of course becomes a part and parcel of our life. So whenever we talk about EMI versus income, an important concept which is known as FOIR comes into play. Now, what is FOIR? FOIR is fixed obligation to income ratio, right? So I'll give you a simple example. Assume that your salary is hundred, then that is your fixed income, right? To to that income how much is your obligation obligation is basically your emi typically in case of a home loan it could be somewhere around 50 to 60% of your salary right so this is how your breakup of your emi would look like or this is how your emi would look like in comparison with your salary now what will happen as years pass by your income will keep on increasing it could be in the nature of increments it could be in the nature of bonuses it could be some life changing events like you get married and your wife is also bringing in good amount of salary in the house so that is how your income level keeps on increasing but what is constant emi is constant so in such a scenario you might now be in a question that what do i do with this extra income do you go on shopping like her or do you go on shopping like her wherein you shop for investments and you decide to earn a better return as compared to your loan rate of interest or would you want to directly knock off the loan or repay a big chunk of the loan so if we have to take this decision there are multiple things that we need to consider but what are these various things that we need to consider well there could be a variety types of loans that one person can take but just for example purpose i have taken these five category of loans home loan gold loan personal business and credit cards okay you can also see what rates of interest typically are charged in each category of loans okay now let's take the same example that you have gotten an extra income now because of promotions or incentives or whatever an additional earning member in the family now assuming that you have taken a home loan what read how much is the rate of interest somewhere between 7 to 8% now instead of repaying a chunk of this loan if you decide that let me invest this money somewhere now what could be different places where you can invest let's say possibility number 1 bank fd and debt mutual funds could that be a wise choice check how much is the rate of interest that you are going to get it could be somewhere between 5 and a half 6 bahut ho gaya tha bhai 6 and a half percent right in this scenario what is happening let's understand how much interest are you going to get somewhere around 5 6% but how much interest are you going to pay for a home loan that is going to be 7 to 8% would this be a winning scenario or would this be a losing scenario this will be a losing scenario so it makes no sense to invest in fds and mutual funds rather than knocking off the loan right then what else could be the different investment avenues it could be something like ppfs or sukanya samruddhi yojana it could be something like buying gold or gold etfs it could be investing in commercial papers or commercial fds or maybe in equity in index mutual funds or something like normal normal mutual funds as well right now i have also given the rates of interest here so what you have to do is you have to use this thumb rule am i going to get more rate of interest rather than the rate of interest of your loan if that be so is that going to be an advantageous situation answer is yes but on an average if you see only the last chunk which is of index mutual funds or normal mutual funds or equity for that matter that over a long period of time can stand out as a winner as compared to your loans rate of interest now the question is that okay maybe uh, you know buying an index mutual fund is not that tricky but choosing good quality stocks can be tricky for you and if you don't know how to choose the best fundamentally strong stocks so that's the course on our website www.rachnaranade.com you can also use the coupon code CARRYT to avail some extra benefit as well if you complete this course or when you complete this course then you would want to know fundamentally strong stocks on a monthly basis so that you can revise your knowledge and for that if you want you can also join our YT pro investor membership it's available only 
barely at 400 rupees per month. So definitely you can try this out. You can get one stock analysis per month. Of course, it's not a recommendation, but it contains a detailed analysis of one fundamentally strong stock. Well, now that you have understood the thumb rule that when your returns from investment are higher than the interest rate of your loan, then ideally your choice should be investing this money rather than knocking off the loan. But could there be certain exceptions to this rule? The first exception could be that if you are close to retirement, at that point in time, you don't want to, you know, bother about the market movement, this, that. If you are close to retirement, I believe you should knock off the loan rather than thinking about equity returns and mutual fund returns. Second one could be if you have availed a loan from NBFC or a small finance bank. The interest rate could be typically higher here, somewhere around to even 12%. In such cases, again, you should be giving priority to knocking off the loan rather than investing this money. Third could be your peace of mind a sound sleep at night. If you are brought up in such a way that you have been told by your parents continuously that don't take a loan or even if you are taking a loan, repay it first so that you get a sound sleep at night, then sometimes these qualitative factors can also override your mathematical calculations. And the last one can be that if you have taken a loan and the age of the loan is less than five years, then Achha, did not understand this. Okay, let me take an example. I have recently taken a loan just say two years ago and I get some nice increment or some bonus here. In such a case, I would give a preference to knocking off a big chunk of the loan. Why? Because in the initial few years, your interest portion in the EMI could be more as compared to the principal repayment, right? So to reduce your interest outflow, it is important that your uh, overall loan reduces in the initial few years. So in such a case, again, you can give a priority to loan repayment rather than investing this money somewhere else. But in this scenario, the big question is, is there any prepayment penalty? The answer to this question is there in the pinned comment. Well, I hope with all the points that we discussed till now, you are very clear as to when should you knock off the loan or when you should invest the excess money. But I think you will be more convinced before taking this decision if I give you some nice numerical example. So let's take a numerical example here. Assume that your loan amount is 50 lakh rupees and assume that you have bought a house worth rupees 60 lakhs. Okay. Now, how much is the amount to be paid to the bank in 20 years, assuming that the rate of interest on home loan is 7.5%. You will be paying 96, so you'll be repaying 96.67 lakhs. And I'm sure you might be like, what? For a 50 lakhs loan, you're going to repay 96.67 lakhs. From, from where did I get this calculation? It's a simple Excel calculation. You have to use the EMI formula, okay? You can get that on Excel, YouTube, how to find it out. Very simple calculation. And with this, if I just go towards the end of my entire calculation sheet, you will see that you had taken 50 lakhs worth loan. On that, you are going to pay only 46.67 lakhs of interest. And that is why you are going to repay only 96.67 lakhs. Okay. Remember the peace of mind wala point. If you feel that, OMG, I am going to pay so much extra, better knock off the loan. Right? Don't even look into the math otherwise. So how much is your EMI amount? The Excel sheet that you saw right now, as per that 40,280 is going to be your EMI amount. Now, how much is the total amount paid in 60 months? Now, you might be like, what is the 60 months now? Assume after five years, because of some RBI policy decisions, this, that, your bank has decided that now the revised home loan rate of interest is going to be 8.5% instead of 7.5%, right? Now, I'll take you back to the Excel sheet and here you will see that at the end of five years, that is at the end of 60 months, okay, how much have, how much is the balance? Your balance is 43 lakhs 45,105, correct? Now, on this amount, what you wish to do is that because you are already in that burden that, oh, oh my God, I'm going to pay so much interest to the bank, now, you say that I want to increase my EMI and I want to knock off the loan as soon as possible. Now, you might be like, how do I increase the EMI? If you remember, I have already told you that five years have passed by. So, would your salary have increased? Yes, maybe you have gotten some promotions. You might have gotten certain bonuses. So, now you have a capacity to pay a higher EMI. Okay. So, now with the revised calculation of the bank, now you are going to decrease the tenure of your loan from 20 years to only 15 years. Okay. So, 5 years have already passed by. Now, how much is the balance tenure? It is only 10 years. Right. Now, your new EMI is going to come up to 53,873. So, how much is the total amount to be paid to the bank now? That is going to be 64 lakh 64,000. Again, normal EMI formula is, is used. And so, in totality with the revised rate and the revised tenure, the total amount that you are going to pay to the bank is going to be 88 lakhs 80,000. Now, focus. 
had the rate of interest not changed had you not reduced the tenure how much was the total outflow if you remember it was 96 lakh 67000 right instead of that because of the reduced tenure now you are ultimately going to pay only 88 lakhs 80000 right so how much is the total interest saved that is 7 lakh 87000 okay now point is that after 15 years even though your loan is knocked off because i want to do a good comparison balance 5 years which now are remaining in your hand this money which you would have paid as an emi now i would want to invest this money somewhere correct now how much could be the potential amount of investment that could be 53873 correct tenure 5 years how much could be the average annual return that you may expect that could be 14% now you might be like abhi ye 14% kahan se aa gaya now for that if you have a look at this this is a value research uh, website here you can see that on an average your index funds generate somewhere between 13 to 14% returns but wait this is the 10 years criteria that i'm looking at could the returns vary yes so even though i'm taking 14% rate of interest here word of caution this could be lower than 14% as well if you are talking about only a 5 years tenure what could be the total corpus at the end of the 5 years it could be 46 lakhs 43000 as your investment and the returns that you would have made considering 14% would be 14 lakhs 11000 okay now let's do a final math how much is the amount saved on home loan interest this one is this figure 7.87 lakhs this is the same figure that i have taken here absolute returns made this is this figure on your investments at 14% this is this amount now i have taken a third line of tax benefit foregone now what is this tax benefit foregone nothing you have you are losing out on this tax benefit on interest on home loan paid assuming into your you are into the 30% tax lab that will be 2 lakh 36000 and in totality your total gains will be 19 lakh 62000 this will be option number 1 when you are choosing to reduce the tenure of your home loan but could there be any other option for that let's check one more option now let's move on to option number 2 but to understand this option let's understand what had happened in option number 1 if you remember in option number 1 when the interest rate hike happened after 5 years at the end of 60 months from 7.5% to 8.5% at that point in time the person said that i would be happily willing to increase the emi amount and reduce the tenure of the home loan right now in option number 2 the person says that i would not want to increase my emi i would keep it same and whatever is the extra amount the would have been emi versus the existing emi whatever is the extra amount i would rather invest it in something like an index mutual fund or an equity for a longer time span and enjoy the returns from the market okay now let's understand the calculation first of all how much is the differential emi that is 13593 now you might be like where did this, where did this come from if you remember in option number 1 new emi was 53000 something versus old emi was 40000 something now the difference between these two 53000 minus 40000 is coming to 13593 now what is this person going to do this person is going to invest this amount for 15 years now you might be like why 15 years because we have to do a proper comparison originally also loan was 20 years now if i were to go to option number 2 i have to take it at a similar level of 20 years so original 5 years have already passed by where 7.5% was the rate of interest so how much is the balance tenure that is 15 years now how much is the average annual returns that i have taken that is 14 years same that had the logic is same that i have given in option number 1 how much would be the corpus size corpus size would be 81 lakh 70 thousand how how did this come up 13593 per month saving and i'm now taking it at a 15 years level that is coming to 81 lakh 70 thousand on this 14% rate of uh, uh, rate of returns i can say i would have made an absolute return of 57 lakh 23 thousand in this case is this my gain yes now let's understand what is happening how much is the money total gain we are now trying to calculate total money total returns that i got on the additional amount that is 57 lakh 23 thousand but wait did i pay additional interest now you might be like what additional interest because you are paying not 7.5% but 8.5% okay did you reduce the tenure of your loan from 20 years to 15 years no and that is the reason why let me take you back to the excel sheet here you will see that at the end of 5 years that is 60 months 
this was the interest now your interest amount has suddenly changed from 7.5% to 8.5% so it has jumped from 27000 to 30000 and now i'm taking you towards the end of the loan so here if you just do an alt f2 you'll understand that this is the total interest that you have paid and this amount is coming to 55 lakh 74590 how much was the interest in option number 1 it was 46 lakh 67118 so how much is the difference extra interest that you have paid that is almost 9 lakh 7472 is this a gain or is this a loss that is a loss because that is the extra interest that you have paid so what i have done in our calculation i have taken this as minus okay but wait you would have gotten a tax shield a tax benefit whatever interest you pay on home loan you get a tax benefit on that so again i've calculated 30 percent of this amount of 9 lakh 70 uh, 9 lakh 7 thousand so this is your saving so again understand 57 lakhs something was your returns on your money invested 2 lakh 72 thousand is the tax benefit 9 lakh 7 thousand is the additional interest you are paying then what is this 9 lakh 7 thousand again because at the end of the tenure you would have still an outstanding amount of 9,7471 why because you did not change the amount of EMI correct so this is the reason why this also has to be knocked off so this is going to be minus 9,7000 okay so how much is your total gains net gains net gains comes to 41,81000 this is in option number 2 I hope option number 2 calculation is absolutely clear well, I hope you enjoyed all the math, Excel sheets and a lot more numerical calculation all in all to sum up as per option number one, how much gain you would have made that was 19,62,000 and as per option number two, you would have gained 41,81,000. So numerically knocking off the loan was not a good option, but investing the surplus in equities or in mutual funds was a better option. But of course, a word of caution equity market returns and mutual fund returns are subject to market risks They're, the actual returns can very well vary from your mathematical calculations i hope you enjoyed this video if you have that like button is what you can definitely hit and of course you can also share this video with your friends and if you want to know more about the debt of adanis you can click here and if you want to know more about a fundamentally strong stock you can click here till then take care Chahin, and bye bye